first draft of the law to regulate Dhaka suggested you would only be allowed to have four plants on your property. Steve Swart is the chief whip of the African Christian Democratic Party. Steve, good afternoon to you and thank you for your time. You oppose the legalization of Dhaka. Why do you oppose it? Well, Stephen, thank you. We've got deep concerns about the cannabis for private purposes bill. And even the, the, we are so aware of the devastating impact that the usage of cannabis, THC, we must distinguish between THC, CBD, and of course CBN, which are um, very, that distinction is very important. But we are so aware, and I've raised it in the committee, of the um, impact that cannabis has had, particularly on adolescents, uh, and particularly when mixed with mandrakes and other drugs. Now, the Department of Health made a very important input last week to the Justice Department, the Justice Portfolio Committee, on this issue. And they said, allowing cannabis for private use is likely to increase the usage of cannabis by adolescents due to more open use and therefore great exposure. And they are at risk of having arrested psychological development as well as brain development. Now, this is the Department of Health. And they are saying this continues until the age of 25. So this is one of the issues that we are deeply concerned about. However, that having been said, we would look into and support the usage of CBD cannabis, which has got very low THC for uh, hemp purposes, industrial purposes, um, commercial purposes, and of course, the medicinal usage of cannabis is something that we will also consider because it's been proven, and this is also part of the inputs from agriculture, from health, that's been very successful with the treatment of cancer, of diabetes, and other issues in that regard. I mean, all of the arguments that can be made against the legalization of DACA, and I mean, there are strong arguments against it, there are strong arguments for it, but all of the arguments that can be made against it also hold for the use of alcohol. You could easily argue the fact that alcohol is legal for sale to people over the age of 18 means that it is also available to adolescents. No, absolutely, and I think this is a key aspect when one approaches this bill. Now, remember, this is only, as you correctly indicated, private purposes of the bill. So how do we deal with adolescents that are um, exposed to cannabis? How do we deal with alcohol? So today, even in the portfolio committee, I raised the question to one of the persons supporting the legislation, supporting, uh, in fact, they, they, many in the industry are saying this bill must be rejected because it doesn't go far enough. But the example of a driver who has stopped with alcohol um, and is tested and that particular submitter said under no circumstances must a person who's using cannabis be stopped for testing and I found that unacceptable and I'm glad that Mr. Prince who was very involved in the constitutional court matter agreed with me and said the treatment of alcohol and cannabis must be similar if you're on high on cannabis you should not be dry driving so these are issues that we are grappling with at the beginning stages of the bill but it is also very interesting from our perspective, I've always advanced the issue of restorative justice. Now, today we had the, um, the, the Children's Law Center making a very helpful input on how do we deal with adolescents that are, have possession of cannabis. And surely one's got to be very sensitive to that issue. And to have people that are in possession, and now it's been obviously the Constitutional Court has said it should not happen, but where they would be in prison, for possession, I think that a restorative justice should be uh, applied, in particularly even with adults, when it comes to possession. And we see our, our criminal justice center is so overcrowded. Right at the moment, there's a GBV debate taking place in Parliament. So from our perspective, we are looking to try to improve the bill, to try to ensure that police resources, where police are not even dealing with state capture, corruption, murder and rapes, are not chasing after a person for possession of a small joint and, and a small bit of uh, cannabis, and that, that is, and rather approaching it from a restorative justice perspective. But it's very important that the state law advisor as well has indicated that the legalization will place the state under enormous pressure and will give rise to substantial abuse of cannabis. Now, this is also from the departmental perspective, sure. as this will put stress on the current measures in our law. Okay. So we're struggling in the criminal justice sector as it is, 
and this is one of the ACDP's concerns. Steve, there are many things to look at with what you've said there. I mean, one of the things you talk about, the idea of people who, who drive drunk and people who drive under the influence, and that the two must be treated consistently there. Uh, why must they not be treated more consistently in our society? So government suggested you'd only be allowed four Dacha plants uh, in your home, but there's nothing stopping you actually going and filling your entire property with alcohol at the moment. I mean, surely there should be consistency if alcohol and cannabis have similar impact we should treat them in a similar way? Well, these are some of the issues that one has to look at, obviously, from the Constitutional Court's perspective, where they've given Parliament the uh, directions to, to consider what would be an amount that you should have in possession. Now, obviously, from the ACDP's perspective, we've got a concern as well with that aspect, because you have adolescents, you've got children that could be exposed to those um, the, the cannabis in your private home, but we appreciate that the Constitutional Court has already given that ruling. And we know when it comes to alcohol, you have children that are also um, su subjected to alcohol abuse. That is probably uh, more severe than cannabis abuse. But it's important to also note that the Drug Master Plan has already indicated that they're trying to take steps um, to deal. And it came up today as well in the Portfolio Committee about schools where you have cannabis being sold I'm talking about THC cannabis now and the detrimental impact that that has on society. So whilst the cannabis lobby group will argue that we've got to um, decriminalize and we've got to uh, make it widely available, I think one's got to be very careful what the societal impacts will be. And of course, the alcohol argument is very important and we need to more strictly regulate the access to alcohol because we know that many people are addicted to alcohol as well, including children. Steve Swart, we have to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed. Chief Whip of the African Christian Democratic Party, the ACDP, do appreciate the time.